So I wanted to talk to you today about something a bit unusual that I came across in one of my boxes of old computer bits, and then I want to see if I can actually do anything useful with it. Meet the NVIDIA Tesla K20X. These things came out back in 2012 and were aimed at large enterprises with massive requirements in data processing, analytics, deep learning or artificial intelligence. NVIDIA built this dual slot card around their brand new GK110 processor, a chip so big that its silicon die size is comparable to this Intel Itanium processor from around the same period. They coupled its 2688 cores to 6 gigabytes of DDR5 memory through a 384 bit wide data bus. Big numbers indeed for its day. Talking of big numbers, this beefy card cost a whopping 7,699 US dollars when it came out. That's nearly 10 grand in today's money. These days you can pick them up for less than a round of drinks. Nobody wants them. In fact, this one came as a freebie with a second hand workstation that I bought last year on eBay. The Tesla K20X is seriously outdated today for sure. It's never going to hold a candle to my RTX 3080 Ti, but I think there still might be a little life left in it yet, and I'm keen to find out what it can still do. Before I can use this in a computer, I'm going to need to address the fact it has no inbuilt cooling. The card will produce up to 235 watts of heat when it's running, and it will need to be able to dissipate that to stop it from burning up. Back in the day, these cards were intended to be run in special rack cases with their own powerful fans to blow air through them, so this Tesla has no fan of its own. I'm going to modify this one by adding two cheap 40mm fans to the plastic shroud, which should hopefully keep the processor below the 85 degrees Celsius needed to stop it from overheating.
okay, all done. The fans sit in there pretty nice. You can see um, they're powered by this little Molex uh, connector. You can see the male and the female there. It would have been nice to have the fans powered from some power takeoff on the main board, but I couldn't see anywhere obvious to do that. Now you'll also see that I've blanked off the end uh, just to stop all the air pressure just coming out of the back, which you don't want. You want the air to be forced that way down the case and come out of the uh, the vent at the, the back there, which it will do. I don't think you're going to see hurricane levels of wind here, uh, but it'll hopefully be enough just to keep the thing cool, stop it from overheating. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is go and plug it into the computer and uh, give it a test. So the Tesla is sat nicely in my computer. The fans are spinning and the NVIDIA drivers recognise it correctly. As a first experiment, I want to see if it's possible to use this card to mine cryptocurrency. I tried some of the more common mining programs, but although they could see the card, they didn't support the old Kepler architecture found on the K20 and they wouldn't use it. A bit of googling led me to try Phoenix Miner as allegedly it still supports Kepler chips and would you believe it, it not only worked but it was happy to mine Ethereum. Now just because it can mine Ethereum doesn't mean that you would want to use it for that. As you'd expect this card is very slow at mining this difficult coin and after a gentle overclock and test run for 24 hours it was returning a mine speed of about 2 mega hash for a draw of 80 watts, similar to an old incandescent light bulb. For comparison, my much newer 3080 Ti card returns about 85 mega hash, and that has special code in it to deliberately slow it down. At today's exchange rate, running this old Tesla for a whole year would land you with about 73 US dollars profit if you're not paying for your electricity, and little to no profit at all if you are. I fancy trying a different currency and loaded up Vertash Miner to see how that fared. Vertash Miner is well known for running on just about anything, and it had no problem at all on the Tesla. Again, I gave it a 24 hour run mining Vertcoin, and at today's rates, it was coming back with an annual revenue of around 82 US dollars. It's better, but still quite poor. So, to conclude, using this card for crypto mining is, as expected, not worth it, unless for some reason you already own a ton of them and have a limitless supply of green off grid electricity in need of a base load. And let's not forget the value of crypto changes constantly. In fact, Ethereum went up 560% in 2021. If it did that again in 2022 and again in 2023, that $73 would look more like $2,289 by 2024. But that's just rampant speculation. Of course, no one really knows what it's going to do. Something I thought this Tesla might be better suited to is helping with medical research. Normally, researchers need access to massive, expensive supercomputers to model the protein structures of various diseases to look for weak points that will be receptive to new drugs. Originally, only the well-financed medical research teams have access to that kind of computing power, but now they all do thanks to an excellent community project that you might have heard of called Folding at Home. The idea is that anyone out there like me who has a bit of computing power to spare can install a simple program and any unused processing capability I have gets pulled in with everyone else's to create one massive distributed supercomputer that medical teams can use to help them. I won't profess to know anything about the medical research side but then I don't need to. All I need to do is run the program and it'll make my computer available to the processing pool automatically. As you can see here, the software recognises the old Tesla and is happy to use it. Not only that, it really flies along, delivering around 180,000 points a day with no overclocking, and that's actually quite meaningful. Clearly this card is much happier running a scientific workload than mining crypto. We can even take a look at the protein that the Tesla is currently manipulating, just to see how it's getting on. It's also possible to get some more descriptive information about the work that it's doing. It says that the project scientist is studying, I quote, Conformational dynamics of proteins using molecular dynamics and experimental methods to make rational drug design better, cheaper and faster. Well, I've not a clue what that means, but it sounds important, so I think I'll commit this card to the Folding at Home project rather than mining Ethereum. Earlier in the video, I mentioned that this Tesla's price tag was US$7,699 when it came out in 2012. Well, less than six months later, NVIDIA released a consumer gaming graphics card called the GTX Titan. And as it happens, I do own one. This was quite a desirable gaming card in its day, and at US$999, it wasn't cheap for a gaming card either. At the heart of this gaming card is, you guessed it, the exact same GK110 Kepler processor as the Tesla K20X, with the same 2688 CUDA cores. 
The card even has exactly the same 6GB of DDR5 memory on the same 384-bit wide data bus. This Titan literally is a Tesla K20X, except on the Titan they gave it a built-in fan and fitted the ports to connect a monitor. I imagine any company that invested heavily in Tesla K20Xs would have been quite annoyed when this Titan was released so shortly after, at a fraction of the price. Maybe they had a ton of unsold stock, who knows. That old Kepler chip still pushes games along pretty well. It's not the latest and greatest by any means, but in my view it's still quite a feat of engineering, not least because it's just so flexible. It's just as happy to help cure diseases as it is to draw alien space stations full of baddies to dispatch. Well I think I've waffled on enough now. Thanks for watching this far, and if you'd care to like and subscribe I'd be very grateful as it will help me grow this channel. See you again in a future video soon.